everyone. It's always difficult to be the speaker who goes right before lunch, but what I'm going to try to do is uh, take the advice of a very good political consultant, which is give a shorter speech and then take time for Q&A and be the most popular politician in the room, so that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> materials, Women of Wellness is dedicated to the connections that raise consciousness. And politics really is all about being conscious of what's going on in the world around you and connecting. So how did I get started? I like to use my own story as a, as a reason to say that everyone can cook, everyone can be involved. Um, I grew up in upstate New York, in the snow belt. My parents weren't rich. I had never taken a political science course. But in 1982, we had a recession. And the recession meant I had to take a job as an office manager for a local politician. He lost his race. But a congressman down the road, a new freshman congressman, his name was Sherwood Bowler, won his race. And I sent my resume, not knowing anything, to his district office. And it turned out 4,000 people sent their resumes to Washington, DC. And 15 people sent their resumes to his district office, where he was every day. So he called me, and he asked me to come in. And he said, would you like to come work for me? And I said, well, what would I do? And he said, well, you'd be my receptionist in Washington, DC. And you have one week to let me know if you'd like to come. One, that means one week before his swearing in, which was January 3rd, which was my mother's birthday. And I'm really excited to offer you the salary of $13,000. And I thought, well, I could probably live on $13,000. It seemed like a lot for me. We were in a recession. I was just happy to have a job. So I, I started with him. I went to work for him. And I learned there a lot about Capitol Hill, how the White House tours work, uh, what happens at the Smithsonian. Uh, learned a lot about people, because people who come in to talk to him about issues were there every day including lobbyists from Washington, D.C., and people from our own district who were real Americans. At the end of the year, I got kind of bored, and I said, I wonder what else is out there. So I got involved in the Reagan campaign in 1984, and subsequently was appointed to the Department of Agriculture, which was very comfortable for me, because I came from an agriculture region. I used to say my town had more cows than people, and I think that's true. Uh, and I loved working in the administration. You know, we see in the news today everything about the farm bill that's passed the House and what's going on with food subsidies. And uh, I remember back then being involved in the 19 years in that. Um, from there, I once again got a little bored in politics and decided to go try something else. And I got involved with a, with a group called Campaign America. And Campaign America sounds like a group that's, you know, what, what could it possibly be? It could be anything, right? Well, it was kind of the front organization for Senator Bob Dole's campaign when he ran for president. And I had the opportunity to work for him, not just on the presidential campaign, and we all know he was not successful, but in the Capitol office when he was the majority leader. And I learned more from him about how to conduct myself in politics, what to do, how to be a good listener, always to be honest, traits that we all have, that we all know. Um, and I just have to throw this out there, Bob Dole's going to be 90 on Monday. And um, still, we saw him a couple weeks ago, he's doing great. Elizabeth Dole has actually started a group that um, helps veterans, uh, the young veterans coming back home, which is outstanding. She's really, she's always had a cause. She was so great at the Red Cross and her cabinet roles, and is doing very, very well with that. And I mention these things because here I was, a little girl from upstate New York that had barely left my hometown. I went to school at Clarkson University in upstate New York. And I ended up working for some of the most famous politicians of our time. Then I got a wild hair and married a Californian and decided to get the heck out of there. So I came out here, once again trying to find my passion. What would I like to do? Started my own business, helped some, built some coalitions in Sacramento and on Capitol Hill. 
and ended up actually getting appointed by George W. Bush as his labor representative. And that's an important story that I want to tell you because I worked for the first Asian woman, the first Asian American woman ever to be appointed to a president's cabinet. Her name was Elaine Chow. And she came here when she was eight years old on a boat from China. Her father had already been here. He sent for her. She came by herself. She spoke no English. And she ended up rising through the ranks in a, in a amazing way to become the first Asian woman in the cabinet. And I tell you this because anyone in this room has the ability to do that. Anybody here can empower themselves in politics. So how does our feminine ar archetype prepare us for politics? Well, think about the things that you care about. How many people here care about education, their kids in schools? How about health care? Anybody care about health care? You wouldn't be here if you didn't care about health care, right? How about parks, recreation, environment, right? How about healthy eating, the food that our kids eat, right? So women care about these issues much more passionately than men, it turns out, and collaborate much better to get things done. So if you care about the environment, you care about your parks, you might be able to apply for a planning commission whether it's on a county level, whether it's in your city or town, there's ways that you can do that. It's not that hard to get involved. If you care about education, I, uh, for example, I served on the San Ramon Valley School Boards Facilities Committee. Their job is to evaluate all the facilities projects and you know, where should we, should we rebuild that swimming pool because it's fallen down? What happens to the bleachers <coughs> in the football field? Things like that. Um, it's not that hard to get involved. All you have to do is think about how to connect with people who are involved, whether they're school board members, whether it's your local mayor, whether it's a member of Congress, whether it's a local assembly woman. So how do we engage in everyday women issues? Well, we do it every day, we just don't realize it. If you plan a party for your son's class, you're engaged in the process. If you're a member of the PTA, you're engaged in the process. If you volunteer for a nonprofit, I'm involved with the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network because my mother passed away from the disease. That makes me now a healthcare advocate. If you're a businesswoman, every day your business is involved with a regulatory climate in California. And there's ways that you can get involved with that. Um, I was appointed by Governor Schwarzenegger, who's a name that we can't say very much in front of women's groups, but he, <laughs> had, some real, he had a really good administration of people who, who obviously surrounded him uh, very, very well. Um, and I want to just take a second, you know, there are a lot of different groups you can get involved with, and some of them are nonprofits, and some of them are for-profits, and some of them prepare you for running for office, which is not easy, and I can tell you that because I did that as well. Um, uh, one group I'm involved with in the East Bay is called California Women Lead, and we are actually a group who prepares women to be appointed for office and to get elected to office. We hold campaign schools, we hold trainings. Our membership is something like 60 or $75 a year. We hold events, um, and I wanna invite you who are here, we have two events coming up. Uh, one in Walnut Creek, which is featuring Kristen Olson, who's an assemblywoman from Modesto, who was in a very agriculture district, and Fiona Ma, who is a former assemblywoman, uh, represented San Francisco, who's running for the Board of Equalization in our area. One's a Republican, one's a Democrat. And they're gonna talk about how they collaborated on issues. And that's a piece of politics that I think women sometimes don't realize. We have a better ability to collaborate and to take away political labels, and to look at the issue as the issue, and to listen to one another, we have a better ability to do that as women. And the sad thing is this, 18.3% of our US Congress is women. There are 535 members of Congress, there's 100 senators and 435 Congress people, congressmen and women, 98 of them are women, yet, we're a majority, more than 50%, especially in California, we're even higher than that. 
So while our numbers are low, the ability of women to now get more engaged and get elected is becoming greater and greater. And we have a greater number of US senators who are women right now than we've had in the past. I think it's about 20% right now. So, you know, I talked a little bit about political labels, and I want to go back to my very first boss, uh, Sherwood Bowler. He was a congressman from New York. He was a very moderate to liberal Republican. And I remember going to a college where he spoke. It was Portland State in my hometown. And he said, I don't walk up here with a big R on my chest and tell you you have to agree with everything that I have to say, but I want to represent you. So think of R as represent. And that sticks in my mind today because that is what succeeds. We are consensus builders. We do want to represent. We do want to make a difference in people's lives. We do want to get involved in what's going on in our we do it every day, and we sometimes don't even realize that we're doing it, and realize the impact we're already making. Sometimes it's tough to take the next step to say, I want to be appointed to something, or I want to be elected to something. But we actually, right here in Alameda County and Contra Costa County, have more women elected than almost any of the counties in the state. Um, we have another event from California we, Women League coming up that has Assemblywoman Susan Bonilla. She represents Concord. Assemblywoman Joe Buchanan, she represents this area. And a new supervisor, Candace Anderson, who represents Contra Costa. Contra Costa has a woman majority on their board of supervisors, which is very unusual. But we are making strides, and we are getting elected, and we are getting appointed, and we are making a difference. It's just a matter now of getting more people to step up and say, OK, I'm not afraid to ask somebody like Judy Roy, will you introduce me to Joe Buchanan? I would really like to get involved in education issues. It's not hard to do. The problem is a lot of people just don't think they can do it. And what I'm here to tell you is we all can do it. Everyone can cook. Everyone can be involved in politics. We are volunteering every day doing the things which prepare us for these positions and prepare us to run for office. Who knows, in this audience there might be the next congresswoman. We don't know. So what I would say to you, and I'll, and I'll just end on this note, you know, Leslie talks about using your masculine energy and using your powers for good, and, and, and part of that is mentoring other women to get involved. And I'd like to think that all of our speakers here will probably be willing to do that, to mentor people to get more involved in politics, um, to mentor people to take care of their health a little bit better, um, to engage you in an issue you maybe never thought about being involved in, but maybe today will make a difference for you. So what I want to do is just say this. If you, if you approach every situation where you're volunteering and where you're thinking about making a difference with, how can I help? You'll be surprised how many doors that opens for you. So I would just ask you this, how can I help? And I'm ready to take the questions. Can I help? How can I help? How can I help you by facilitating a Q&A? If you have a question, I'm going to invite you to stand up and form a line, and we can get your questions answered with Judy. We have a question over here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Terry, and first off, I want to thank you, Judy, because Judy has been one of those instrumental people in my life that has introduced me to some amazing contacts as I'm starting my own business. So it does work. All you have to do is ask. And my question is, um, you have a passion, and um, as the, um, our previous speaker spoke about starting up a blog, and if you would just share your journey and how successful it has been over this last year and how that got started, I think that would be a really important message for everybody. Well, I appreciate the question, Terry. Terry, if, if you all don't know, Terry runs What's for Work, which is an amazing uh, nonprofit group, for profit these days, um, that's uh, trying to help women uh, after they've had their kids to get back into the workforce. And, uh, deals with job sharing and flexibility and empowering men and women. It's a very, and her forum is very empowering, so I would highly recommend it. I know we're not supposed to sell from the stage, but I hope you'll indulge me with just this one. Um, I started a, okay, so to back up, when women get involved in politics, you can sometimes get appointed, you can sometimes get elected, and you can sometimes be in between. Well, I happen to be a Republican in California, so there's a lot of in between for us. And 
I decided, okay, should I follow the path of some of my other friends and go uh, teach politics at Northern University? Should I think about doing that? Or should I think about doing something in media? So I decided to do the latter. I have had a passion for writing. I actually went to a women's forum very similar to this where we took a, it was called the Berkman Series Test and it tested very high for love of music, which I do have a great love of music, and for writing. And one of the things that it encourages you to do is follow your passion. So I started a blog, it's called Thoughtful Women. It's at thoughtfulwomen.org. Um, and I decided that I wanted to go talk about issues that we talked about today. Women in the workforce, health care, uh, how, how does this affect your, uh, how does the government programs that you have today affect your family budget? Uh, how do gasoline prices affect you? Does that impact your carpooling? Are there are too many cars on the highway? Uh, too much for the environment? So we talk about all those different issues. And I started it a year ago, and as of, I think, yesterday, about 2.4 million have hit it. 2.4 million. <laughs> so that's not bad for an amateur. But I, but I'll tell you, I had no idea how it was going to go when I started, but I, I backed up and took all the things that I had learned. And, and I would encourage anyone, this is a, you know, again, I know we're not supposed to sell from the stage, but if you're interested in writing and you love to get involved in politics, come see me. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have another question. Your first name and your question, please. Hi, my name's Coco. Hi, Coco. Hi. I wonder, from your perspective of an insider, if what you see is the potential for restoring this country to a constitutional republic and getting ourselves free from the grip of the control of the corporations. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a flip side to this question, which is, yes, the corporations are a big issue. Yes, it does feel like the corporations are a big brother on top of us on everything. It's made it much more difficult for small businesses. I happen to work for the NFIB, the Small Business Association. Tougher for women to get contracts, things like that, because of how they, they award everything to the big companies. The other side, the flip side is unions are just as guilty. And so how do we restore, how do we get out of the grips? We have to all collectively take action and say, we've had enough of this. And how do we liberate ourselves, if you will, from corporate greed, from union greed? I mean, and I'll give you a perfect example. What's going on with BART now, with BART workers, is ridiculous. And if you've read the Contra Costa Times, they've actually called them out on it in a way that I think has been very helpful and productive. We have to care about those issues. If you have to take BART to San Francisco every day, or if you care about you know, getting more cars off the, off the highways, you, you, we got to care about this stuff, and we can all group together and have a voice in that process. So I appreciate that question a lot. Thank you. Sounds like collaborating. Yes. <laughs> we have another question from Tennesseeva. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, what position did you hold under Schwarzenegger's administration, and what was the position that you said you ran for? I, uh, I held the position, I was an alternate member of the California Coastal Commission. And I never actually served because I was the alternate to the chairwoman. And she never missed a meeting, which I was thrilled with. I mean, all the men missed meetings, but the chairwoman never missed a meeting. So I was actually, I actually had to study all the materials and be ready in the event that I would be called, but um, I was never called. But I learned a lot. <laughs> and uh, what did I run for? State Assembly. I ran in 2008 for the State Assembly. And um, had I won, there would have been a woman versus woman race between me and Joe Buchanan. Um, Joe beat the male who beat me, which was okay, and she's a good person, and she's doing our, uh, my forum with me, even though she's a Democrat. We, you know, that's one of the things with women in politics. We all know each other, and, you know, we can help each other. We get involved, and we try to really be mentors to one another. Excellent. Thank you. Are there any additional questions for Judy? Come on up. And if you could say your name and your question. Linda, Linda. Hi, friends. Hi. Uh, this is kind of a personal question. I think there are a lot of women who do kind of flirt with the idea of getting into politics. Um, we all have opinions, I'm sure, about everything. Um, but <laughs> sometimes there is this um, sort of stigma about once you get into politics, you know, you become political. And um, I think for women, maybe that might be more difficult. Um, 
So how do you deal with not <laughs> being a uh, part of that stigma of being political and keeping true to what you originally got into it for? Well, for me, it's been having good mentors. Um, I mentioned the guy I worked with in 1983, Stuart Bowler. He was a great mentor to me. Bob Dole was a great mentor to me. And one of the things that both of them taught me is never forget where you're from. And if you can always stay grounded and say, here's where I'm from, here's how I grew up, here's my heritage, here's why I care, then you'll always be successful. And that's really what it's about. Do you, have you been confronted with the pressures um, of being swayed in certain ways? And you know, do you have groups coming to you and trying to pressure you into you know, either going against your grain or, or going a certain way? Every day. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, do, you, do you please everybody or you just have to? Well, okay, so here's how I, I would answer that. that. I wonder. Here's how I would answer that. I'd rather have a conversation with you and build a consensus with you than I would say, oh, you're this and I'm that, oh, I'm not for that, and walk away. So to me, it's about being, like I said, being a good listener and engaging and realizing that we, we you and I have a common thread because we're women. So what do you care about and what I care about? And there's some issues that are very difficult to get our arms around as women where people have their backs to one another. And my philosophy has always been, let's tear down those barriers and find the stuff we can agree on. Do you find that women do that more than the male? Way more than men. Yeah. I mean, and I'll just give you a perfect example. Um, what we're seeing now with the president's handling of Congress and Congress's handling President, it's ridiculous and it doesn't need to be that way and I am very hopeful and optimistic that perhaps we're reaching a point where as that continues people are going to get really mad I mean everybody's approval numbers are down now they got to be looking in the mirror every day saying what have I done wrong so I would like to see more women speak out about the, um, the EQ that the former speaker was talking about and try to impose that on men a little bit more. I mean, you know, people like you who are empowered, uh, you know, just mention it once in a while. Maybe they hear it enough times. To... <laughs> well, what you know, one thing I find they're actually scared of us because because we'll collaborate. That's why they're scared of us. And the other reason they're scared of us, it's too easy for a Republican man to be a very Republican polarizing figure, and for a Democrat man to be a very Democrat polarizing. Figure. And the women in Congress find a way to work together, and that scares the crap out of them. And it's an awesome thing. <laughs> I, I agree that women are scary men. What I would like, what I would like, to, see, what I'd like to see women do, because they are gaining power, is to be a positive influence. I think there's a lot of women who are very much trying to compete with men. Instead, you know, scare them into being good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great questions. We have Dr. Hewitt with a question. Yes. Thank you so much for being here, Judy. Um, I, I just want to have a little dialogue. It is so important to not be afraid of politics and to really start getting engaged. The reason we have a political woman here is because I am such a huge activist, and I know all of you are as well. And you just need to plug in somewhere. The, the last question really inspired me to get up here. I am involved politically in the state of California. And I'll tell you how to get involved with a bunch of men. Be the token female. Be the token female. Because once you get in with the guys and they start hearing your voice, and you do it in a way, there's a way not to scare them. You don't show the collaboration card up front. You, you start getting to know them and what I have done is I start being their advocate. The other thing, when you go to the Capitol building, all of the aides, most of the aides, are females. So although our women are not stepping up in politics, we have a lot of aides. When we go in from woman to woman, we can do a lot of the collaboration with the aides. And guess what? The aides are the ones that are meeting with us and actually hearing our message when we build relationship, and I just want to say this as women, we have what's called ROR. The guys have ROI, return on investment. We're return on relationship. We build relationships so that when the aide knows that you want something done, she's going to pull strings for you because you're a female that went in and created a relationship with her. 
So be the token female, start supporting the guys. So what I do with some of the politicians that I work with is I actually support them and do some of the stuff that they can't do themselves. And it's because as a woman, I can get 10, ten women involved, whereas he's too busy trying to keep his own piece of the pie. And as women, we're out giving the pie away. Right? So I have a question after all of that. For all the women in the room here, every single woman here is here because they have some activism in them and they just, as women, we don't know how to navigate. How do we get something on a bill that can get passed? How do we get some of our ideas to the legislative process other than, you know, maybe joining some groups and learning the ropes? What can you do with your organization to really plug some of these ladies in with some of their ideas? So, and I really appreciate that question. Um, California Women Lead is a nonprofit um, that tries to encourage activism, tries to get you involved in politics if you want to be on a political campaign, if you want to run, if you want to be appointed. We train you how to get involved in that process and how to collaborate with other women. And the reason that we're doing programs with several of the female legislators, Republicans and Democrats, is to give you that opportunity for access. Because if you come and hear them talk about the issue that they're passionate about, you will listen and it will resonate with you and you'll be able to go back to them, either through them one-on-one -on -one or through their staff and say, okay, well how can we talk about this issue, which is an issue that, you, that that's important to you. Um, and, if, and, and the other thing I would say, you know, Leslie, you and I have talked about this, if you don't think politics is involved in every decision that happens, your health care, the energy, the environment, the business regulatory climate in California. I mean, we are overwhelmed with regulations and overwhelmed with things which change how we can do things. And I think women come to the table and talk about the choices we'd like to have and the things that we'd like to do, and it has a huge impact in how they legislate. Um, if we can... I'm sorry, can you say the name of the group that they can help us? Um, it's CaliforniaWomenLead.org. And I have, right over here, I have business cards, so I'll be available, and um, if you just take my business card and email me, I'll give you, I'll, I want to invite both of you, our events are August 15th and September 18th. I want to invite all of you to come to those and learn about it, hear from these women legislators and women who are supervisors, and think about what your passion is, what issue you might like to be involved with, because you'd be surprised, they really want to hear from us. And we help empower them, which makes, all better. On the website, thewowfactor.co, if you click Community Partners, you will see Judy there with her website. You'll also see Terry there with her website, What's for Work. And part of the Community Partners is so that we can create the web where we can start accessing each other. So ladies, please contact Judy and get involved politically. It's really where the work is done. And it's not that difficult. I know that I've been politically involved for probably over 10 years and I'm finally at a leadership level in my community where I actually am making decisions. And I'll, I'm, I'm just gonna say this, this is how I did it. I'm gonna tell you how I did it. I went to a lot of political rallies. I went to the Capitol building. I started hanging out with the organizations that I really support. And this is a secret. I don't even know if I want to put this on the website. I would go to the bar afterwards and have a drink with the guys. Amen, sister. Yeah, seriously. I would go, and I'm not going to go and drink and get sloshed, but I would go to the bar, I would have a drink, and I would be a politician. I'd go around and meet every single man at the bar, have a drink, and guess what? Do you know how many other women were at the bar? No. None. None. Because they don't go to the bar afterwards, but guess where all the guys are going? They're going to the bar afterwards. So I would go to the bar and have a glass of wine, and the guys started going, wow, she's kind of cool. She's coming to the bar, she's having a drink, she's hanging out, she's not flirting with us, she's being really professional. And what she's saying, wow, she's smart. You know what, we can use her as our token female. <laughs> and, you know, and they need females on their boards. So be the token female, get on some of these boards, Go out and have a glass of wine and talk in a really professional way. 
Don't get into your issues at the bar. Get into building relationships at the bar. And then what happens when they need to nominate someone to a position, they know who you are, they've had a drink with you, and they know that you're a real person that can make some big decisions for them. I found my way, and I always say, I, I got to a leadership position at the bar, having a drink with the guys. <laughs> It's true though, isn't it? it That's is. where the guys Absolutely. are going. And Absolutely. the women are not going there. The other thing is politically, you, you have to be willing to collaborate in a way that the guys don't get scared because they do get scared. They really get scared. So there's a way to do it without flashing that collaboration card up front. But what you can do is start supporting the guys in a way that validates them and there's i tell you the men love to be validated and in the beginning they take the credit but eventually people start recognizing that you're the one doing the work and then all of a sudden before you know it you're the one that's being put into the position because they realize that you're the you're the woman behind the guy so yes this I mean all of our events for California women lead have a bar meaning where we have cocktails we have a reception it's not just you come and we talk at you it's that you come you collaborate you have a drink everybody talks about their issues that's what we do you know for my organization but what Les is saying is really important and I'll tell you why if you approach remember I said at the end how can I help if you approach a male legislator or a member of Congress and say, what's, what's most important to you? How can I help you? You'd be surprised how it rolls in your mind, how you can actually help them. Then when you go to them of the issue that you want their help with, you've already helped them. And then they feel obligated to help you. That, so. that, that's another thing that I've learned going through this process as well, is you never make bad relationships because it's, 20 layers in that, you know, there's no boys network going on out there, right? So there's 20 and we're creating the woman's network. But you create relationship and you may disagree, and this is the beautiful thing about a woman, right? You may disagree across the aisle, but later you'll need that person on the other side of the aisle to help author a bill. And you're gonna need their vote. So you never burn bridges. You actually, even if you disagree as women, just learn to disagree in a way because somewhere down the road, you're gonna need that person on the other side of the aisle to offer a bill or support your bill or vote for your bill, right? Absolutely. Which is, it's an incredible process, ladies, and this is why Judy's here. She is our expert politician. And get on to her website and start following her and paying attention to what she is doing because a lot of you have some issues that you really want to bring to public policy and she can help you that's why she's here and i'm in the room today because i really want the women i, I wish every single woman here was in this room because it's really important this is the only way we're actually going to get stuff done in this country i mentioned earlier we've got belief and environment and we can do a lot of things intuitively and telepathically but there's there's this side of it too we actually have to take some action politically Really thank you, that. thank you. If I cannot, I would like to just end with a note um, in this regard. So, uh, in March, I had the opportunity to meet a congresswoman from North, uh, South Dakota, and I never met her. Her name was Christy Dell, and she's this incredible, honest farmer. She was a farmer. Uh, she learned farming from her father. Um, and she became part of the U.S. House leadership as a freshman, which is very unusual. They picked her because of her leadership skills, because she had uh, been a legislator and had moved up to be her majority leader at her state house. And she told a story about, I didn't know whether I wanted to be in leadership. I've got three small kids in South Dakota. What would this mean? And then I realized the decisions are going to be made in that table in that room. And I didn't want to not be at that table. I wanted to be part of that discussion. And I leave you with that just because that really resonated she said, sometimes it's worth the sacrifices to help make stuff better. And I, I really just appreciate that. So 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Judy.